Okay, picking up again. Um, notice that on the right hand side we got Balaam reference. Notice on the left hand side in Jude we got tracking to what Peter's writing. So he's folding to Peter. He's he's tagging Peter as using incorporation by reference, which is a valid literary and legal technique, to show that hi, he's writing new canon. That's what you're supposed to do. And he's basically saying, hi, it's to be rebellious, like the Korah Rebellion, which was attempting to take over from Moses. Okay? Then he continues. On the right-hand side, you've got Peter, men are springs without water, mist driven by storm. Black is darkness. We already saw some of that. He puts it up earlier. And here he's saying this. Now, when he does this, He's obviously tying to Peter on the right-hand side, but he's also tying in Ephesians 4.14. Okay? You have to look at the Greek to know that, because Paul's saying the same thing about false teachers. Okay? But now he does a second insertion, which is also nowhere in Scripture. This right here. Now, scholars have been talking about this for a long time, and unfortunately they don't know the difference in in dialogue between say when Moses writes what happened to Adam using an actual conversation that went that occurred between Adam and Eve or Adam and God or Eve and the Satan okay you're bringing in something that happened in the past you're getting it straight from God and you're stating it all right because there is a fake book of Enoch out there, and you know it's fake when you read it because it's Mad Magazine. It, it, there's no way that the so-called book of Enoch we have is canon. This quotation on the left is not in there. Okay? This is, you know, the, the you, you'd have to really pretty much say that the so-called book of Enoch we have is a garbled version of this quote in scripture because the supposed book of Enoch we have is many centuries later and there is no original Hebrew of it. Enoch would have spoken Hebrew, proto-Hebrew, okay? And there's no, there's no such thing, all right? So therefore, we know that the so-called book of Enoch we have is a big bogus invention. But this, on the left-hand side, is a direct quote about Enoch, what he said at the time, Enoch was the prophet of the flood, okay? And the reason why Jude is bringing that up is that our boy Peter had talked about Noah as a preacher of righteousness. Well, but where did Noah get his information? Noah got his information from Enoch on the left-hand side, okay? The, the, the guy who kept on saying the flood is coming, the flood is coming, was Enoch. All right? Noah got his information from, you know, you got Enoch, Methuselah, and Noah. Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, Noah. I think that's the right genealogy order. You have to look it up in Genesis um, 7 or 5. Enoch was the guy who started prophesying about the flood. There was a thousand years... Um, headway about the flood. Methuselah means when he dies it happens. That was Enoch's kid. Enoch named his kid. When he dies it, the flood, happens. So Enoch, the whole time he was here, kept prophesying about the flood and then of course Methuselah kept it up and then his grandson Noah kept it up. Whether Lamech also did, I have to assume yes, but you know, I can't really say. So that's why Enoch is brought up here. Enoch is the progenitor of Noah. So he's folding in more information to buttress what Peter said. And he's directly quoting Enoch. So again, he's making a claim, just like he did with the quote from Michael and Satan about over Moses' body. Now he's going backwards in time. Enoch, yes, <clears throat> I'm getting this quote directly from God. And again, still the doctrine. The false teachers are grumblers and fault finders. They, you know, are trying to get your money. All right? And then, again, he <clears throat> talks just like Peter does in 2 Peter 3. Remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. 
In other words, he's saying, look, what the apostles told you is true. And every Bible book we've got was written by somebody who was an apostle or an adjunct to an apostle like Luke. Luke was an adjunct to Paul. Okay? And now he's, this is in 2 Peter 3. Oh, I forgot to mention something. Let me go back. This seems to be plain to Hebrews 12. They will come on the clouds. Okay? I can't prove that. I don't know if Hebrews is talking back to Jude or Jude is talking back to Hebrews. That's the problem I'm still having. Okay? Because we saw up here when he talks about this, this is, it, this is the topic of Hebrews 3. He's summing up what Hebrews 3 says. So is the book of Hebrews based also on Jude or talking back to Jude as well as Peter by having Hebrews 3 in there? Okay, because that's basically the theme of the letter here is that, see, the people got destroyed because they didn't believe even after they got out of Egypt. And then he brings up Sodom and Gomorrah being destroyed. And then he goes all the way back to Enoch even, which is about the flood. Okay. In other words, warning, then destruction. Warning, then destruction. Well, that's what the whole book of Hebrews is about. So is Hebrews talking back to 2 Peter and Jude, or is Jude talking back to 2 Peter and the book of Hebrews? I can't tell right now. There's going to have to be something. I can't find any vocabulary in the book of Hebrews that is specifically referencing Jude because it's so much like 2 Peter any references that are in the book of Hebrews to the same content as 2 Hebrews as 2 Peter I don't know okay but this is new and I don't find any reference to it in the book of Hebrews and this is <clears throat> In, you know, talked about without quoting in uh, Hebrews 12. So how come? Who's who's talking? Who's tagging who? That I don't know. But obviously they're all tied together. I mean, at least we know that much. So they're close together in time, all these four books. But this could be as much as 10 years later. I mean, that's not really that much later, really, when you stop to think about it. This talks back to 1 Corinthians 1 and three okay this is talking to the end of second peter all right this is talking maybe to the book of john or john is talking back to it all right so i mean you know and this is of course talking back to james four and five okay and then we have the great doxology that everybody loves really high high group there it might be metered I gotta check that okay so the bottom line is I really don't know you know the scholars are saying well Jude could have been written anytime from 66 to 90 and some of them even think it's later than that and I can't prove I mean it doesn't make sense to say it's later than 90 but I can't prove it's much before 90 and there's a lot to argue that it comes out, you know, within 10 years of Second Peter. That's as far as I can go with it right now. Sorry.